For those of you neat nick fly tires, this may not be the pattern for you. But for those of you looking for an extremely durable and proven saltwater fly, the Albihor is right up your alley. It was created by Long Island fly tire Richard Reagan and named by him as well, not by me. For a hook, I'm using a Mustad 34007. I really like a size 2 for this fly, but it will work in both smaller and larger sizes. Begin by getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Load a bobbin with a spool of heavier thread, such as UTC 140 denier in white. Some prefer mono thread for this fly. Get the thread started on the hook shank and after a dozen or so wraps rearward, snip off the excess tag. Create a thread base all the way back to the start of the hook bend. This is one of those patterns where preparing the material prior to the start of tying is a huge advantage, as you will have your hands full once tying begins. Select two fairly short white or tan hackle feathers and two longer ones. Prep all four feathers by stripping the lower fuzzy fibers free from the stem. The short feathers should now be about a full hook in length and the larger feathers a little more than two hook lengths long. Make sure all are within easy reach. The same goes for two strands of pearl crystal flash held at their midpoint. Pearl chenille or estaz in a variety of colors can be used for the body of the fly. Here I'm using fluorescent yellow. A 10 inch length will make numerous flies. Strip fibers from one end to expose the string core. Snip in half a single strand of lateral scale. You should also have on hand flat stick on 8th inch eyes as well as a bodkin to aid in their application. The real key to this fly is a hot melt glue gun. I prefer one like this that comes from a home center as opposed to one from a craft store. This model has a fairly narrow tip which helps with accuracy when it comes to applying the glue. It also has two temperature settings. The high temperature generally yields better results. It's a good idea to place the tip of the gun over top of a scrap piece of paper or here a sticky pad, as often, without provocation, glue guns will decide to ooze melted glue. Having a few extra glue sticks on hand is also recommended, as you don't want to run out of ammo during the heat of battle. An artist's palette knife, although not absolutely essential, comes in real handy when working with the hot melt glue. The blade is just the right size for quickly spreading and smoothing the rather viscous melted glue before it sets. Now that you have all your tools and materials in place, get hold of one of the shorter hackle feathers. With the concave or dull side of the feather facing you, hold the feather at the ready close to the hook shank. Clear any blobs from the nozzle of the glue gun, then apply a small drop to the shank at the location of your tying thread. Press the feather into the molten glue and make sure it's well adhered to the hook. Get hold of the second small hackle feather and repeat the process on the far side of the hook. Unless you have Teflon fingertips, wetting them before touching the hot glue really helps. The fly should now look something like this. Take wraps of tying thread to anchor the feather's stems to the midpoint of the shank, then snip them off close. Return your tying thread to the base of the tail. Pick up the midpoint of the two strands of crystal flash and place it against the near side of the hook and take thread wraps forward to secure it. Pull the forward pointing portion of the crystal flash back and bind it down against the far side of the hook, all the way to the base of the tail. Snip the crystal flash off even with the tips of the hackle feathers. Pick up the stripped end of the chenille and place it against the near side of the hook, then take tight thread wraps to secure it. End with your tying thread at the initial tie-in point. Take touching wraps forward with the chenille to build up a fuzzy underbody on the fly. When you reach your tying thread, use it to anchor the chenille, then snip the excess off close. Take a few more wraps of tying thread to neaten up the head area. Use your tying scissors to trim just the near and far sides of the body, leaving the top and bottom fibers alone. Get hold of one of the longer hackle feathers and with the cupped or dull side facing you, gently stroke the lower fibers down until they're perpendicular to the stem. Apply a thin bead of hot melt glue to the entire length of the body, then embed the feather's stem into the glue. 
Press the stem in with a palette knife or a moistened finger. Once the glue sets, the feather should be firmly affixed to the fly. Flip the fly over. Grab the second longer hackle feather and repeat the same procedure for adhering it to the far side of the fly. Your albihor should now look something like this. With the fly back in its normal orientation, reach in with your tying scissors and carefully snip off the excess stems and any fibers that are unwilling to play nice. Once again, take wraps of tying thread to clean up the head area, then trim away any wonky fibers. Get hold of one of the lengths of lateral scale. Apply a light skim of hot melt glue to the near side of the body, then secure the material to it. Flip the fly over and repeat the procedure on the far side. Use your tying scissors to snip off any of the material extending past the back edge of the hook eye. Sweep everything back and take wraps of tying thread to anchor the front ends of the lateral scale. Then build up a nice little head on the fly. Do a five or six turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip or cut your tying thread free. Trim the lateral scale to the same length as the longer hackle feathers. Angled cuts look best. Apply the stick-on eyes to each side of the fly at the back edge of the thread wraps. Then run a bead of hot melt glue over the eye and down over top of the lateral scale. Do this on both sides of the fly to seal everything up and increase durability. Fill in the open areas between the eyes, both top and bottom. In just a few seconds, the glue will harden and your albihor will be ready to fish. It's difficult to get this fly to look super neat because of the vagaries of hot melt glue, but most saltwater fish species, especially albies, could care less. Mm -hmm.